Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm just going to make a quick response video to Pyro, in which I'm going to make him look very foolish. Let's play his clip. You're saying there's a 95% chance of being in the last 5% of the people. And that's just that's painfully wrong. No, I'm saying that there's a 95% chance that you and I are in the last 95% of people who will ever live on this planet. Um, I'm going to play my video again, but I'm going to add an audio to it this time as per your request. Pyro, I'm simply arguing that whatever your birth order position is, one can always argue that there is a 95% chance that one is amongst the last 95% out of all the homo sapiens who will ever live. Such a prediction accepts, indeed stipulates, that it will be wrong on 5% of occasions, i.e. for those born early in human history. Those who have already been born and who were amongst the first 5% of people who have ever lived are simply examples of the 5% error margin the doomsday argument allows for. One thing to bear in mind is that reasoning which failed for people at most points in human history by suggesting wrong predictions to them might still suggest a correct prediction to most humans who could ever use it. This thought experiment might help to clarify the argument. Imagine an experiment planned as follows. At some point in time, three humans would each be given an emerald. Several centuries afterwards, when a completely different set of humans was alive, 5,000 humans would also be given an emerald. Imagine next that you, you yourself have been given an emerald in the experiment. You have no knowledge, however, of whether your century is the earlier century in which just three people were to be in this situation, or in the latter century in which 5,000 people were to be in it. Suppose you, in fact, betted that you lived in the earlier century. Hello, Mr. Bean. If every emerald getter in the experiment betted in this way, there would be 5,000 losers and only three winners. The sensible bet, therefore, is that you live in the later, later century of the two, because you know that more people received an emerald in the later century compared to the earlier century. In a similar vein, the sensible bet is that I am amongst the last 95% of humans who will ever live, because there will be many more people who will fall into this category than those who don't. 19 people out of every 20. Ergo, I have a 95% chance of being correct that I am amongst the last 95% of humans who will ever live. Okay, Pyro, so what would you do in that thought experiment? Would you do the Mr. Bean thing and vote that and bet that you were um, in the earlier century and that you were one of the three people who received the emerald? Or would you do the sensible, logical thing and bet that you were in the latter century and amongst the um, 50,000 people who received an emerald? I mean, I would definitely go for the latter option. And in a similar way, I don't know, and you don't know, if we're in the first 5% of human beings who ever lived, or in the last 95% of humans who will ever live. So, without knowing either way, I'm plumping and assuming, with um, a high, high chance of um, accuracy, that I am in fact amongst the last 95% of Homo sapiens who will ever live. And if that's the case, then the total amount of Homo sapiens who will ever live will be no more than 1.2 trillion, because 60 billion people have already existed. Well, that's the best estimate. So if you divide um, 5 
if you divide 20, um, sorry, if you divide 100 into 5, you get 20. So if you multiply 60 billion by 20, you get 1.2 trillion Homo sapiens. So I can say confidently that there is a 95% chance that the human race will never exceed a total of 1.2 trillion Homo sapiens who will ever live on this planet. QED.